All right, guys. Whoop, I hit the wrong PowerPoint. <clears throat> there we go. So we're going to continue on. Um, this might be it, actually. I think this is the last set of notes. Okay. Um, for finishing up our anthropology set of the death unit. You might hear some rain or some thunder behind me. Um, I am at home now <laughs> in my PJs, and uh, it is raining behind me. So if bones could talk basics by the end of class, you will know what, ske what skeletal remains can tell investigators about a victim. You should be able to know how to determine age range, ancestry, gender of the victim, or that's the wrong word, sex of the victim, um, of which skeletal remains were found, calculate the height of the victim at the time of death based on the lengths of different long bones. So the previous one we looked at um, ancestry, so breaking down those three categories of race, and then um, we looked at the long bones for height. So today we're going to look at age and how to tell the difference between um, male and female. So bone basics, there are differences am amongst the bones that can be used to distinguish many things. Gender, again, I need to change this. I, I, I copied and pasted some of these, sorry. Um, and yeah, like that should say sex, male or female, age, young or old, and then ancestry. So male versus female is what we're gonna do first. Um, let me move my face out of the way, okay. Um, you can see some, here's two skeletons here. There should be more pictures throughout it. Um, and we'll do some kind of virtual lab version of being able to see this later. So the first part in the male, the mandible. So mandible is your jawbone here. Okay. Um, more square and more pronounced jaw. So you can see that one pretty clearly in these two pictures here. Um, it's not labeled, but like I can already tell like this one is way more square. So that square shape little point there than this rounded mandible. So this is the female skull down here. Um, for the female, smaller mandible, so just smaller in general. So you can see like it's just a smaller in size, more rounded and more smooth. Now for the skull part, so the rest of the skull, larger frontal bone. So that's this bone right here, pure, okay? Larger frontal bone, larger temporal bone. Um, so bones off to the little side, it notches out more. Larger os, os, os oh my goodness, occipital bone, which is the bump in the back of the head. Okay, so that you can't see from these pictures, um, but you'll if you see the skull in person or in more pictures, there's just a bump on the back of the head. Um, that men generally have a larger bump back there, um, and the brow is usually up higher. So the brow is a little up higher and usually much more pronounced because this frontal bone sticks out. Um, for females, it should be a smaller frontal bone, smaller temporal bone off to the side, smaller bump in the back, brow is shorter, so not as far across and definitely not as pronounced. Um, it's not a perfect thing if you, but if you start noticing, looking at like men and women in your life, um, especially like full grown adults, I see it in teenagers a lot where a lot of like the males in my class don't have big um, brow ridges yet because they're not in their mature estate. Like I could probably met them five years from now, it probably would would grow a little bit because y'all are still actually growing and developing for sure. Um, a lot of this part of your face is still gonna mature. Um, and not all women don't have, so like, like I do, like it sticks out a bit on mine. Um, so I would like, I have like a slightly masculine brow. Um, so it's not like all men are gonna have giant brow ridges. No, some of them don't. It's just on average, those tend to be bigger on a male, smaller on a female. Okay, um, longer bones, we, we talk about this with height. So the our long bones, our, our humerus, our radius and our ulna, our femurs, our tibia, fibia, all those generally are lar longer on a male, even if they're the same height. So same height, man and woman, they're generally, the male will still have longer long bones, so longer arms, longer legs. Um, larger bones to allow more muscles. So like just literally the muscle will be, I mean, the bone itself will be bigger around um, to withhold more muscle attachments. So vice versa for the girl, um, shorter, long bones, all of those will be shorter, smaller bone size. Now for the pelvis, this is what I have a lot more pictures of. This is definitely the most obvious, okay? So definitely the most obvious difference between the, the male and the female. For a male, they're going to have a narrow, long sacrum. So the, remember the sacrum is whoop, this bone right here, okay? So that bone right there is the sacrum. There's this, oh, I, I did go ahead, what happened? Oh my goodness, I like click down three faces, same picture. Um, so right here, this is the sacrum and generally those are much um, longer and thinner on a male. The pubic arch is less than 90 degrees. Now that's a little harder to see in this picture, but it's right here. So see this little arch right there? 
and see how it's much more wide. So like arch like this on the male and then like this for the female. So much smaller. So like 90 degrees is here. It'd be smaller than 90 degrees on a man. For women, it's tend to be bigger than 90 degrees. Okay. Um, smaller pelvic inlet, more circular um, or heart shape. So the inlet is when I look down at a pelvis. So if I could see this circle part in here, um, this for one, the circle is going to be so it's hard to angle this when I'm on the camera. It's much going to be smaller in a male, bigger in a woman, um, and more circular or heart shaped like that. So it's kind of usually more heart shaped, <laughs> which is cute. Um, and then for a woman, it's going to be larger and more oval shaped. For obvious reasons, women go through childbirth or can go through childbirth. So it has to have a much bigger opening. Um, so here's some better pictures of that. So here's those. Uh, no, I know I just lost the word. The pubic arch, there we go. So the arch being bigger than 90 degrees for a woman, smaller than 90 degrees for a man. Um, if I'm looking down on the pelvis, a much wider space here. And the sacrum, so that backbone, that's where like butt bone behind us, um, is tilted backwards um, on a female. So like this has this bone here in the middle and for a female it's tilted backwards. So it's out of the way for childbirth. Um, and for a man, that bone would be tilted inward because it doesn't really matter. So you can't really see the sacrum poking through as much in the inlet, but for a man, you can see it. Notice this is much wider, more oval, man, more heart-shaped. And then obviously bigger and smaller. Males also tend to have larger bones than females and larger areas for muscle attachment. So I already said that. All right, now determining age. So that was determining um, male, female. Now looking at age. So I'm talking to my computer. By examining the biological changes that occur in lifetime, investors, investigators can identify relative age. So teeth, bone growth, growth plate formation, and enclosure of cranial sutures. So those are like how our cranial sutures, these little cracks in our head, how they close. Um, we'll close at a pretty average time rate. So we could look at how far along their progress is to determine their age. So determining the age at death depends on whether an individual was an infant, subadult, or an adult. So we're going to put them in those categories and then look at how far in their growth process in those categories they were. So for an infant, most reliable is the development of the teeth. So if we're looking at a small, less like toddler and below, the best way to decide their age is by the development of their teeth. Since each tooth has a general timeline for coming out, I'm actually appearing, the teeth can give a good indication of how old the infant is. For a subadult, um, so a kid, so before an adulthood, so anywhere from infant to not an adult, um, most reliable is the growth of the long bones. So our arm and our leg bones. <clears throat> During growth, the ends of the long bones are separated from the shaft by cartilage plates. So you can see that here, literally still separated at 10. At 15 years old, which some of y'all have just passed, um, still having some separation, still having a little bit separated here. And then by 16 plus, usually fully fused. So head fuses to the shaft um, and males from 16 to 18 and females from 15 to 17. So by 18, um, your long bones should be fused. So like by what we call adulthood, 18. Now these cartilage growth plates fuse at different stages in a child's life. So age is determined by looking at the sequence of those fused bones. So we could tell that if they were still here, then they're past like small kid and they're in their teens, but they're not at the end of their teens yet. So determining age for an adult, most reliable is the pelvic symphysis, the spine, joints and the sagittal, the sagittal suture, which is this line on the skull. Okay. For pelvic symphysis, so in our pelvic bones, they can be compared to others of known ages to help determine age of death. So we have just have some examples of how worn down they should be and things. You can usually tell if a woman's gone through childbirth by the way it looks. Um, in older adults, there are degenerative changes in the spine and joints associated with the aging process. So our spine gets more compacted. So that can be telling me age over time. And then lastly, this line on the top of their forehead, um, the sagittal suture can give an age range for skeletal remains if the sex of the skeleton is known. So we, we know it based on um, sex. So male, male, female, it's closing in a slightly different 
um, time frame. If you are pretty sure if it's a male or a female, then you should be able to do this, noticing that we get more and more closed over time. And actually that, that happens like into adulthood. That's something that closes as, as a kid. Here's a bigger picture of at birth, this is our long femur bone. At five years, all these things being disconnected completely and just full of cartilage, so it can keep really growing. Um, 10 years, still having plenty of room to grow, starting to be fused by 15 and definitely by 18, fully fused. Um, feel baby, young, um, older teen adult. <sighs> Again, just kind of looking at the inside of the bones. <clears throat> so like a lot of fetal babies, so like really tiny and babies, a lot of their bone isn't like hardened yet. It's mostly cartilage. Um, compact bone is developing because I mean, it's a lot of cards like they're way more like flimsy and floppy. They have so much room to grow. A lot of their bones aren't like hardened yet. Um, start getting more and more, more and more, more and more over time. So gender male versus female, the sagittal suture. So that line closing in um, for a male, the sagittal suture completely open. So meaning you have the line all the way across the top of the fort, the top of the head, um, younger than 32. For a female, it might stay open to 35. Um, sagittal suture completely closed. Completely open. Am I reading this wrong? Completely intact, partially closed, completely closed. We should be closing over time. All sutures completely closed. Oh, okay, because it's on an age range. I got confused. So Sagittarius Suture completely closed. Um, so older than 26, older than 29. So they're saying that it might happen before this, being completely open. But if they're completely closed, then they have to at least be these ages, 26 and 29. All sutures completely closed. So like all the sutures all the way around it, got to be at least 35 or at least 50. So women take much longer to close those sutures. Because it's not like a little bit of difference. It can be quite a bit. So determining age... We have five years old, eight years old, infant. So um, for this five years old, you can see that the suture is fully intact. This suture is here. Um, for this 80 years old, like you can like barely see it, right? Um, for the infant, it even has sutures in the front that are open, has sutures in the side. So a lot more um, sutures in the in this skull. Two years old, nine years old, adult. Um, so this one should have a line right down the middle, but you can see that discoloration. It's because it's been plastered, like it's kind of been like remodeled. Um, but something to like pinpoint about teeth. This might weird you out. I'm sorry if you haven't seen a picture like this before. Two years old. Those are all their adult teeth that are like up in their mouth. And it's so weird because these are little baby teeth that all have to fall out. Um, you babies are born with two sets of teeth underneath, like, you know, not even out. They're just up here. Just all these teeth are just up in their face which is weird to think about it. Um, so their skulls look a little weird um, with all those extra teeth in there that haven't come out. So that definitely tells you a lot about their age is which teeth have actually come out yet. <sighs> and then nine years old, still have a couple. See, like they still haven't had all their baby teeth lost. So got a couple teeth, but definitely way less than it too. And then adult, adult teeth, you don't see any of those baby teeth. All the adult teeth are out. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to practice that more um, with assignment, kind of seeing some more angles to it. But that's how you tell sex and age. <laughs>